All right, the NBA tipped off last night. There was a Tuesday tip off, but Wednesday was the 15 game slate. So, of course, I'm back here with my co host, Cam. Aaron will join us in some other videos, but right now, Cam and I will be talking about the five takeaways we got from NBA opening night. Cam, first of all, how you doing, man? I see you wearing the Bulls hat. Jay, we are so, the Bulls are not back, but we are so back. We are so back. The NBA is back. You can watch baseball, you can watch football, you can watch basketball, and you can watch hockey almost every day. We are so back. Absolutely. And with sports being back, you know, you're going to be seeing Cam, Aaron and I's faces a lot more on the YouTube, on TikTok, on anything. You can find us on any of our social media platforms. But without further ado, let's hop right into this, man. 15 game slate. You never want to overreact to game one. But Cam, give me your first takeaway from NBA opening night. I will overreact. Boston is an absolute juggernaut. Tatum will be top three in MVP voting. If Boston can keep everybody healthy, meaning especially Kristaps, number one, 30 and eight with four blocks last night is not what I predicted for his first game in the garden, especially in the regular season. Drew Holiday was all over the floor defensively. Boston looks like an absolute juggernaut. They're my pick to come out of the East right now. I mean, we'll see what Milwaukee looks like fully healthy with Dame too, but I mean, Boston just looks incredible. Yeah, I want to preface this by saying the New York Knicks are a tough team to watch play basketball. Julius Randle is just bulldozing his way into the paint and trying to put up all these shots that it's hard to watch Knicks basketball, but they rallied back in that game. They were up six with like three minutes left and the Celtics were able to storm back and win that game. And that's like you said, because of the additions of Chris Stapps, Porzingis and Drew Holiday making big stops on defense, Cam. Chris Stapps was going like, what, he like four for seven from three or something? I don't know the exact box score right now. If he's knocking down those shots and you still have Al Horford as a floor spacer, what's the ceiling for this team? I mean, the ceiling is championship. That's it. They've been the ceiling has been championship for them the past couple of years. But I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I think this is this is only game one, obviously. But if they're maintaining this level of of especially on the defensive end, if they can maintain this level of production, this might be the best Boston team I've seen the past couple of years. All right, that's the takeaway number one. Let's go to takeaway number two, and it's mine. And I want to talk about the Orlando Magic a little bit. Paolo Bancaro, he joins Team USA for the FIBA World Cup. They don't place, but Paolo had a good outing in the World Cup. Franz Wagner, however, Germany came back with the gold in the World Cup. You have two 6'10 forwards as your cornerstone pieces on the Orlando Magic, not to mention Jonathan Isaac comes back, another 6'10 defensive guy, Kim. When's the last time you've seen this team or a team with this many 6'10 guys who can play defense, who can handle the ball? Because right now the Orlando Magic have the blueprint to winning in the future NBA. Yeah, I mean, you you hit it right on the nail, and I got to give you credit for this take you had a year ago. You did say that we would see a playoff series between the Magic and Boston in the, the next coming years. And I there's a I think there's a very realistic chance that we could see the magic maybe they maybe they're a play in team and they get in and they see Boston in the first round and your your prediction comes true we see Bancaro checking Tatum i mean this magic team if they can figure out that guard rotation i didn't love re-signing Cole Anthony to the deal that they did but you know it had to be done so if they if they believe in him if they can figure out this guard rotation i mean that backcourt and is is just not the same level as what they got up front but defensively i mean if you got two 6'10 switchable big guys like that it's it's a nightmare yeah, let me just say that it's so nice to see Markel Fultz. As a fan of the NBA, Markel Fultz hooping again. You saw him kind of lose some of that confidence in Philly, and those Philly crowds can be ruthless. He's in Orlando. He's playing good basketball. He's the starting point guard. But like you said, Cole Anthony came off the bench last night, actually gave him 20 points. He was their leading scorer. He was lighting up, yeah. Yeah, he was lighting up. And Cole Anthony has bounced for someone who's like 6'8", not someone who's 6'1", 6'2". The Orlando Magic are really good, though. And like you said, I did say Boston versus Orlando would be a great playoff series in a few years. Paolo checking Tatum, and and we kind of see not the passing of the torch, but Paolo joining Tatum as those premium guys, those big forwards, those big wings who can also put the ball in the basket and be two-way players. The Orlando Magic have a great future. I cannot wait to see them play basketball. Now, I know they played the Houston Rockets, and I know it's, it's the Houston Rockets. They won by 30. But that's a way to make a statement in your first game. That's my take number two. Cam, let's hear your third takeaway from opening night. Yeah, I want to switch over to the Washington-Indiana game because I kind of have a two-parter here. Number one, Indiana is one of the best teams in the East. They're a definitely definitely a playoff team, but I'm, I want to address the Wizards. 
the ups and downs in the roller coaster, which is called Jordan Poole this season, is going to be an amazing feat to watch. I mean, he didn't have the best game last night, kind of struggled over six from deep, 18 points and 18 shots. But I mean, we know what this guy is capable of on the offensive end. And he led the team in, in attempted shots. I, I think that'll be a trend we continue to see throughout the year. And we'll definitely see a 40 point game the next two weeks. I would I would bet any any amount of money that that would happen. I dropped a TikTok, I think a week ago, talking about the Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma experience for Wizards fans of the season. If you're the Milwaukee Bucks and it's a Tuesday night and you're coming off a back-to-back and you're thinking, I just want to coast, it's the Wizards tonight, get ready for Kuzma and Poole to combine for 80 on your head. I know Poole didn't have a great game, but like you said, expect there to be a big jump back in the coming games because this is the same thing. Pool's shot selection isn't going to change. It's just uh, depending on if the shots are going to go in or if they're not going to go in. Cam, do you have any realistic expectations for this Wizards team? Are they in no man's land? Are they at the bottom trying to rebuild? What is this team doing right now other than having two guys? I just love to put the ball in the basket. I mean, they're kind of, uh, I think they're in no man's land. I mean, they don't have, they they have, they own all of their own picks, but they got some guys on big contracts and not a lot of like high ceiling players, I think would be the right way to describe them. I don't think they're good enough to make the play in. I think they're going to be losing a lot of games. But like you said, you know, when those contenders roll into town on a Tuesday night and they think they, oh, this is just the Wizards, it's an easy game. I mean, those are the kind of, it'll be like eight, nine point underdogs and they'll, and they'll just be upsetting those teams by like 20. Exactly. The Wizards, they play the Hornets soon, and I'm I'm not looking forward to watching that game. It's going to be a lot of fireworks. It might be a lot of bricks, but we'll see what happens. It's going to be a fun game, entertaining to watch either way. That's takeaway number three. My fourth takeaway is going to have to be Dallas Mavericks versus the San Antonio Spurs. And it's not really what you think the takeaway would be. I'm watching that game on ESPN thinking, when's the last time we've seen a Spurs game on ESPN? They do not get national television primetime games anymore since the Spurs dynasty ended, since Kawhi Leonard left that team back in 2018, 2019. And the crowd in San Antonio, small market teams, the crowds and small market teams in Utah, in Charlotte, if it's good, in Orlando, they like to get rowdy if you can give them a product to root for. The Spurs are that product. I remember watching Sohan and Devin Vassell before the game and all the lights on people, people put their flashlights on their iPhones and they're all holding them up, going up and down. Before the game tipped off, the crowd was electric. And if you're a Spurs player like Jeremy Sohan, you haven't played in an environment like that in the NBA at home ever. ever. This is their first time. And you could kind of see it in the beginning where they're like, whoa, this kind of feels like a playoff atmosphere because you have guys like Wemby there. I can't wait. Can give me some takes on that Mavs Spurs game because it was the best game of the night, in my opinion. Yeah, first off, shout out our boy Devin Vassell out there hooping. He's played in big games because he knows what it's like to play in the tuck. But on to Wembenyama a little bit. I can't remember. I, some analysts on ESPN used a really good word to describe him, and I really like. I liked what they the meaning behind it. They said that the biggest his biggest attribute is just the gravity that he pulls. I think he might be one of the best weak side help defenders ever in the history of the NBA, strictly because of how much ground he can cover with his length. I mean, regardless, even if he's out of position, he's just the the amount of shots he alters. I know he didn't block a ton last night. I think he only had maybe one or two blocks, but the amount of people and the amount of time you have to adjust your shot. I mean, it's not easy to block Kyrie Irving, and he did that last night. On the offensive end, I mean, we've never seen a 7'4 guy shooting the ball the way he does. I mean, that's just an incredible. You got to account for him on both ends of the floor all the time. And I just, that's what, that's the definition of gravity. One of the coolest things I saw, and I'll try and clip this video and post it on TikTok because with the actual clip I'm going to talk about, Luka Doncic just posted up in the first quarter and he's trying to back down a smaller defender and Wemby's to help. Wemby's guarding Tim Hardaway at the three-point line and at the same time, he has one hand guarding Tim Hardaway, one hand helping out with Luka Doncic. And it was the first time Luka, you could see Luka, it was so cool, Luka in real time trying to figure out for the first time, how do I play against someone with this much length? And Luca actually figured him out. What he did was he backed down, back down, back down, did the step back, fake committed to the shot. And then when Wemby finally committed and, and helped down for the block, then he kicked it to Tim Hardaway Jr. who hit the open three. And that's what we're going to be seeing a lot this season. 
players who have heard about him, like you said, who've seen the scouting report, but it's not the same until you see the guy in real life, until you face him in real life. And the distance that he can cover is absolutely incredible. Mavs Spurs, really good. Quick takeaways on Derek Lively, who you hit the money on. You said a year ago, this guy's going to be a good first round pick. He came out, he was hooping. I think he was the first person in NBA history to have 15 plus points on 80% from the field or 100% from the field, something like some crazy stat. And that's exactly what the Mavs needed, a rim runner who can give him rim protection. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could just see that you could see the talent when he was at Duke. I mean, it was it was pretty evident. One of our good friends, Jalen Worley, too, was like told me about this guy when he was still in high school. So I was pretty uh, I've been following him closely for a while. And exactly what I thought was going to happen happened. I mean, it, there's a clip of Kyrie in practice, you know, talking about as well. He's like, bro, I can just throw that shit up anywhere. And like Derek Lively will go get it. And like we saw that in full effect last night. For what for how hard it is to like contain Webinyama, I think I think Derek Lively did a pretty good job for a rookie night one performance, you know, checking Webinyama in a lot of these possessions. Yeah, lastly, before we get to the last takeaway, Wemby is gonna be guarded by a lot of smaller defenders. And I I mentioned how the end how players are going to have to in real time learn how to play against this guy. Refs in real time are gonna have to learn how to ref this guy because Wemby got an offensive foul where he's backing down Grant Williams and he happened to like hit Grant with an elbow to like the neck area, but it wasn't intentional. He's just seven four. Like, do you call the foul on him because he's that tall? Do you call a foul on Shaq an offensive foul because he weighs 330? Um, so like, how do you officiate this guy? It's going to be so cool because these, these, these are must watch games. Like these might be games. I I'm there. I'm tuning in for all of them. Takeaway number five. We said all this, the Celtics are really good. The magic are a budding team. You mentioned the wizards. I mentioned the Spurs and the uh, Mavericks. The NBA is so deep, Cam. It's so deep. The talent has never been better in the NBA. Talk to me about expansion and when we might see expansion because the Pistons are giving the heat a run for their money in Miami. I mean, the NBA is so deep. Yeah, I mean, you hit it right on the nail, and I can speak from personal experience. The Bulls have two borderline All-Stars. They'll probably miss the All-Star game just because yeah. of how dense it is this year. But you go back 10, 15 years ago, there is no world in which Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan don't make the All-Star team. And there's a good chance they're both going to miss it this year, strictly because of how much talent there is currently in the NBA. The two expansion teams that are projected are Seattle and Las Vegas. I think both those markets make sense. You know, there's money there. Obviously, Seattle supported a team before Vegas. I mean, like, no duh. They have a ton of money as well. It'd be really cool to see their stadium play in the, maybe we'll see what happens wherever they play. But I mean, it's just, they got to do something, man. There's too many good teams that are going to miss the playoffs this year. Absolutely. That expansion draft is going to be so cool and interesting to see, like, a team say, oh, we really don't want to have to let go of Jonathan Kaminga, but the Las Vegas whatever are going to need him. They're going to say, actually, uh, we're going to take Jonathan Kaminga from you and the Rockets. We're going to take Cam Whitmore from you, and we're going to – it's going to be so cool to see how that plays out. But those are our five takeaways for opening night. There are a doubleheader tonight, 76ers versus the Bucks, And then we have the Suns versus the Lakers. Booker and Beal have been ruled out for that game. Still going to be great. First time KD has played LeBron since 2018. Cam, any last comments before we head on out of here? Yeah, I do think uh, KD's point total is too high tonight. 33 and a half is too many points. He's going to be slightly under that. So, uh, but just because of how much defensive attention he's going to draw, I just I, he'll probably finish in the 28th realm somewhere. But I mean, that's just my, uh, you know, bet. Like Cam said, the NFL is back. We have Thursday night football. We have a doubleheader. Playoffs for baseball just ended. Hockey, Cam, you can see the Chicago Bulls hat. He is a big fan of the new Connor Bedard, did I get that Connor right? Bedard, Connor yes, Bedard, sir. the hockey Wemby. Sports is in full effect. Champions League soccer is here too. You'll be seeing a lot of Cam and I. Hit that subscribe button um, and we'll be seeing a lot of you guys later. But thank you guys for checking in and